Before we begin the roof, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do just a little bit of cleaning up here. I erase these guides, and when I try to erase these ones, they don't erase. And the reason why is because they are nested in this component. Remember I created them when I made this cross piece? So now I can erase them. So now we'll just click back outside here. And uh, let's see, what else do I want to do? Well, I'm constantly kind of orbiting around. And so what I'd like to do is be able to save this as a scene. So I'll come up to view, come into anima animation, and I'll add a scene. A little button pops up here. And let's see, another place that I'm often going is the top view. of this picture here, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so again, I'm going to go to view and animation and add a scene. And there's keyboard shortcuts for that as well. Although probably the quickest way to do it is to come up under Windows. And that's what I'm going to do next. I like to have the entity info window open, um, certainly components. And, um, and now scenes. Outliner can be really handy, but I'm just going to leave that one off right now. And then the instructor, in case I have a question about something. And the instructor changes dynamically every time you execute a different command. Now this kind of goobers up my screen here. And so what you can do is if you click on the word or on this little bar here, it window shades them. And then you can take those and stack them like so, and then bring them down. So if I'm going to make a rectangle and I press in the letter R and I'm not sure what my, all of my options are, I can go ahead and just open up that window shade. Now we were talking about scenes. So you can come in and switch between scenes. by just clicking on them, or double clicking rather. So you can go back and forth real quick to different views and you can rename them and do all that sort of, sort of stuff. If I want to come around the back side here and add a scene, instead of using the pull down menus, I can just go ahead and click this little button and it adds a third scene for me. So let's talk about what we're going to do next with the roof. We have not added this post yet, and so let's measure that. It's just a 2 by 4 Looks like it's about 6.5 feet tall. And this here looks like it's about 5.5 feet tall. And they're just made out of 2x4s. Of course, we have the same thing that is repeated across the back, vertically and horizontally. And then there's probably a dowel up here, or a piece of, of round stock, maybe one and a half inches in diameter so that the fabric doesn't tear across a sharp edge. So let's go ahead and create these two by fours and get them in place. Okay, just had a big crash. I think I um, got everything restored. Auto save saved most of my work, um, saves about every five minutes by default. So in any event, uh, we're talking about these two by fours. So that's one of the things I lost. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, let's see, there we go. And I'll just type in two comma four, and then P for push pull and I'll make it about that long. Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna triple click on it and I'm gonna group it. If you're having things stick and distort, it's probably because you're not grouping your objects. It's not something you have to do, but it's, it's worth the extra mouse clicks. So we need to make this vertical and we need to make it six foot six. So typically, or what I've done in the past is I've pressed Q and we've gone ahead and rotated it. But I wanna show you just a, a different way to do that. And that is with the move tool. 
If you click on move, you'll notice you get these little grips here. And when you mouse over one of them, you get the same protractor. So I can rotate that, type in 90 degrees. There we go. And so now we need to um, scale it. I need to make it six foot, six inches tall. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take, a, uh, well, first I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. I'm just going to stick one right there. And that way I've got what I need for later on. So I'm just going to take a line and draw it from here up along the blue axis and click and then type in six foot six inches hit return so now that line is that long and so now I'll double click my grouped two by four push pull and just pull it up to the end point of that line segment and when I close it I'm good so now I need to move it so Again, I'm going to come up here and grab these because go back to move and I'm going to pick this midpoint right here. Okay, so we'll zoom out then we'll come up here and where I want to put it is about right there. But And so I'll go ahead and put it in the midpoint of that group and then I'm going to do another move. And I can click anywhere for this one. So I'll select my object, M for move, click anywhere, and then go back along the green axis two inches. And it puts it right on that inside face for me, right in this area there, just where we want it. And it's, of course, attached to this, and it comes up our six foot six inches. So now let's go around to this side and copy this over. This time we will. Again, move it, come across, type Option or Alt to make a copy. I'll go ahead and put it right there on that intersection. And then I'll again move it back along the green axis two inches. And there's our two vertical elements. Okay, before we continue with the roof, I'm just going to do a couple of things here to make this green axis easier to see. And so under Windows, I'm going to open up Styles. And you can, there's all kinds of different styles that you can pick from. And that's beyond the scope of what we're doing right now. But I'm just going to choose this one makes it just a little bit easier to see when I'm pulling or moving along the green axes. The other thing I'm going to do is just move the axes. You can do this anytime. And again, it'll just make it a little easier to see what's going on if we have the axes someplace. It doesn't affect any of your modeling. Of course, if you were to rotate the axes, then things wouldn't be square at 90 degree angles anymore. Okay, you may remember when we put in these two vertical boards, I just went ahead and put one right on top of the other. In other words, see how this board continues all the way to this side rail? Likewise, this one goes right through it. And that's not the way it works in real life. So what we're going to use is solid tools to quickly trim it away. Now you'll find solid tools up under tools and union, subtract, trim, etc. We're going to use the trim tool. So let's go ahead and first of all, you'll select the piece that's going to do the cutting first. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the board that I want cut. You can only do two at a time. I can't, for example, cut this one over here. That's going to have to come later. With those two properly selected in the right order, I can now just right click and the solid tools menu dynamically appears and I can just click trim and there we go. I just trimmed it. Let's do that again. So I'll just click out here. I'll select this board first. This is the cutting tool if you will. This is what's going to remain. Hold down my shift key. And I and am select going this to move and this. then right click solid tools from here trim. 
over to here but before i click there we go so again this is if for example I I'm want to move this. My option or alt there we key. go. You can see that it notched it out. Make a copy I deselect. This blue box right here is just defining the group. So if I unclick that or deselect it, you can see that we're able to cut. So, but let's undo that. And then let's just go over the other side. Select this. Hold down shift. Select that. Right click. Solid tools trim. And then select this and then select that one right click solid tools trim now we've got one more place that we need to trim and this board right here has a little gap in it but this one is going inside that so again i'm just going to well actually now this is an entire group so it'll be interesting to see. I might have to explode the group to trim it. Yeah, see, I don't even get solid tools. So that, so with that one, what I'm going to do is instead get all the way into here, turn on x-ray mode, grab that face right there, push-pull tool, and I'll just push it about right there. Let's see what that looks like. Oops, not nearly enough. So we'll go to there. There we go. So that's just another way I can do it. So this board is just a little bit narrower than the others, but I don't think that's going to bother any of the kids playing. So let's go ahead and place those horizontal components. They were five and a half feet long. So I'll take this, copy it, paste it. I'll just put it right there. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. So I'll make a line. I'll pick it on that endpoint, pull up here, type in five feet, five inches, hit enter. Up, oh, I typed in five feet, five feet. So without clicking on the mouse, now I'll type in five feet, five inches. And there we go. So if I want to, I can type in S for scale instead of using the push-pull tool. I can just pull that up and to that endpoint. It's just another way to, to scale it. So now we'll go M for move. Uh, let's see, we need to rotate it, I think. There we go, along the red axis. And then I need to turn it sideways. So I'll click right here. Oops, grab the wrong spot. There we go. Pull that down 90 degrees. And we don't need that line anymore. So we'll get rid of that. And now we're just going to go ahead and move it. And I'm going to move it from about that point right there. Boy, that doesn't look nearly long enough. So we're going to have to fix that. That's not a big deal. Now I put it inside, so now I'm going to move it out two inches like I did before. So I'll select that, M for move, total out along the green axis, two inches. And now let's take a look at a side view here. There we go. When we look at our picture, well, this clearly needs to come out so that it's extended. So. So what we're going to do is open up this group. I'm going to use the push-pull tool and pull this out and so that it's even with the end of that board. And let's see. For now, this is just for support. So I'm going to I'll pull it out about there. Then you might know where we're going to go here, so I'll just go ahead and click outside. So now we'll go ahead and just move it over. I'll click at that base point right there. I'll start to put along the green axis. I'll tap my Option or Alt key and place it right along this edge. And then I'll click one more time to move it out along the green axis two inches. Might be a 
there's lots of ways that we could do that differently, but, but this certainly works. So when we look at it, it looks like everything is nice and parallel and the same height, except I want to move them up, don't I? I click on this, hold down shift key, click on that. M for move, click right there and pull them up to the top of the post. And there we go. Okay, to get prepared to put the canvas in place, let's just take a look here. We've got, looks like some two by fours right there on both ends and we can't really see what's going on up there. I think it's probably another two by four, but since the canvas is gonna drape over that, I'm gonna put in a round dowel. So on this end here, I'm just gonna come into here and um, type in R for rectangle. I'll put it on the end and see how it wants to snap in different directions. Well, you can mouse over it or you can use your arrow keys. So I'm just gonna put it on that face right there. I don't know how big it is, so I'm just gonna type in two comma four and it'll size it for me. And so now I can just use the push pull tool and pull that across to right there. I'm gonna do the same thing right here or for rectangle, just gonna make a rectangle that goes from the top to the bottom and then I'm going to type in two comma four. You might have to type in four comma two, depending upon where you're at with your project, but um, you can, that's easy enough to do. So now I'll just pull that across to that edge there. And so now all we really need to do is put in a dowel, so C for circle, and I'm going to center it over this midpoint and come down to about, no, oh, we'll say it about there. Put it in like so. P for push pull tool, so I'm going to pull it. Whoop. I'm just going to pull it all the way through like that, and then I'll pull this one out. Let's say, let's have that one come out one inch. And then we're going to circle around. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and pull this one back so it's even with that face. And then I'll pull this out one inch hit enter and if you want to you can go ahead and triple click on this dowel right click and intersect the faces of that dowel with the model and you can see where that goes ahead and makes a nice crisp cut line there okay so now what we need to do is make the canvas Putting the tarp is kind of tricky because we've got lots of geometry here that things are going to stick to, plus it's curved. If you want to go ahead and put in, you know, a flat tarp where it's just really, really tight you, and creating it using rectangles, that's just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and try to put in a curved tarp. So first thing I'm going to do is grab all this geometry here and make it a group. That way anything that I draw on is going to be unattached from the structure that we have here. Of course if I want to undo that later on I can click on this group right click and explode it and it'll go ahead and return it back to the condition that it was in. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my tape measure tool and come across here two inches. That way I've now got an intersection right here that lines up with where the dowel penetrates through that vertical upright. Next I'm going to make an arc and I'm going to start it here on that intersection and I'm going to pull it up and SketchUp doesn't do tangents because it doesn't make circles, it makes polygons. So I kind of have to guess where I want it to go and so I'm just gonna guess right here. And then you'll see that the arc, can, it, it's just jumping around all over the place. However, 
If I mouse over this face right here, you see I get an inference for the blue axis. And so if I pull down here, I mean, that's just way too much sag. That's about a foot. So I'm just going to come up here and I don't know about, f I'll go ahead and type in four and hit enter. And let's just double check to make sure everything is in the right plane. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So now let's duplicate that arc. So to duplicate it, I'm going to select my arc. I'm going to type in M for move. I'm going to grab this point right here and I'm going to mouse up along this guideline that I made. I'm going to type in the option or alt key and how far up do I want to go? Well, let's see. It's about three eighths of an inch. We'll just go ahead and say three eighths of an inch for clarity's sake while you're watching the screencast. So I've now got two parallel arcs, so I'm going to use the line tool to connect those two endpoints because I want the cross section of my tarp to be eventually watertight. So now let's come into this part right up here. I'm going to connect this endpoint with this endpoint and hopefully that creates a watertight surface or a face. And it did. So as my son say, awesome applesauce. So with that in place now, let's just zoom out here. I'm going to use my push-pull tool. I'm going to grab that face right there. I'm going to start to pull it across. I'm going to carefully rotate around. And line it up with this face here. And that looks that looks pretty good. So it's a little bit of work, a little bit of trial and error, but I really, really like that. Now, what about the part that goes across the top? Well, we'll go ahead and, and we'll work on that last. We're going to kind of have to ham and egg that because we weren't really quite sure where to attach that original arc right down here. Maybe if I'd done it up a little bit higher, that work would have been a little bit easier. But I do have an idea. So we'll get to that in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and come into here. And on this end, let's go ahead and use the push-pull tool and pull that out 0.2 inches. And then we will orbit up around and we'll pull that face down however much you want. We'll say that much there. Let's see, let's go back into our front ISO view here. And I like that a whole bunch. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to go ahead and complete the other part on my own because it's just a repetition of this, you know, bringing the guideline over two inches and drawing in the arc and offsetting it or moving it two inches etc. And then we'll go ahead and talk about how we can work on that little top part that wraps over the dowel. Okay, so I went ahead and completed the other side. Nothing really different about it. It's got about the same overhang. But what I want to focus on now is this area right up in here. And that's kind of tough because if I use the follow me tool, it's not going to work because this face right here is not perpendicular to this line that goes across. That is the edge of our dowel. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cheat. Everybody loves cheating, right? So let's go ahead and create an arc that goes from here over to here. And we'll just pick along this face. Make sure you snap along there. We'll just go ahead and create an arc that goes across. And then I'm going to use the offset tool, keyboard shortcut F. Then I'll select offset, click, and pull it down. Well, 
Maybe about there. That's good enough. Because remember, we're cheating. So I'll then take and draw a line from here to there. And I'll spin around here and draw a line from here to here. And the reason that I'm drawing those lines is just to create a face. So now that I have a face there, I can take and use the push-pull tool to start to pull it across. So let's orbit around and then we'll zoom in here and we're going to put it right there. So that looks pretty good, but let's make it just a little bit better. And maybe we'll get into materials just a little bit later on. But the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out. Now remember we made all this down here a group before. So when I click or triple click on my tarp, I can right click and make it a component. That will kind of lock everything in place. So I'll just call it tarp. No matter what you call it, just as long as you can find it, know what it is. And then I'll grab my paint bucket tool up here. And let's see, let's make it, let's make it a nice sky blue. And I'll come over and, and paint it. Now, that looks pretty good, but I'm still not completely satisfied because of my little bit of cheating here, I've got this a line here. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to open up my component. I've got a line right here. There we go. That I don't want to show. So I'm going to right click and hide it. And then I'll come around here, select this line right here, and hide it. And that just adds a whole bunch of smoothness to it. Now this area right up in here, if I had connected my arc just up a little bit higher, I wouldn't have quite as much of a break. But I think that looks just a whole bunch better than a flat tarp. So I'm going to call that good, save my work, and move on to the next step.